Matthew Holt, um, you and our loyal listeners might recall how a few weeks ago I bring up the fact that no one is talking about Peloton and the fact that it's killing TV characters left and right. And then what happens all of a sudden? Boom, take out of Peloton. The stock has tanked. The CEO is gone. Thousands of people laid off. Am I the harbinger of terrible things that are yet to come? <laughs> it's this episode, the February 10th episode of Health Tech Deals. Better hope you don't talk smack about anybody else in this one. <laughs> I think there may have been a point where people wanted to be mentioned on this show, and now I don't know. Okay, so we'll work on being very nice. Uh, <gasps> not calling out anybody for you know killing off their characters on TV. I can move markets, Matthew. It, it's actually kind of funny, right? Because the whole article that was written by the the investor who's really pissed off with with the guy with the CEO Peloton was all about how that guy was. You know, he was delegating. He said, this, "I don't understand what the CTO does. I delegated to him. I don't understand what the uh, I don't understand what the uh, operations person does. So I just delegate to her." And you know, he's cashed out like you know hundreds of millions of dollars. So on the way down, to some extent, it's not exactly his fault that the market got so crazy, overvalued all these stocks, you know, so crazily, uh, and got ahead of the skis. And it, you know, there's not much you can do as a CEO if the market's going crazy, right? On the upside. All you can do is do your business. There was a long uh, discussion about what could the CEO of GameStop actually have done other than what he did do, which is sell a bunch of, you know, which sell a bunch of or pay off a bunch of their debt by selling stock, as did a, as did um, AMC and much of the others, right? So when yeah. their stock went completely crazy, you know, you take advantage of it, but it's kind of the stock is kind of out of your control to some extent. Yeah, I mean, maybe they. But what's interesting about the CEO of Peloton here, it's like they're painting this whole story as like, this is a case of like a founder who didn't know when to walk away. Like that's like the, the thing that I heard on the news this morning was all about that. And like they're interviewing people about like, oh, you know, you've got to learn when you've, when you've gone beyond yourself. And oftentimes the entrepreneur who founded the company doesn't realize when this is happening. It's like, and he's not really even going anywhere. He's actually got a promotion. He's the chairman of the board now. <laughs> well, yeah, they really took it away from him. But I mean, he also walked off with several hundred million dollars, right? So, uh, you know, which, I mean, you can all get pure about the fact, well, you know, people shouldn't just sell when it's the stocks at the higher the market. But but on the other hand, you know, uh, well. <laughs> wouldn't, Isn't that the point? Wouldn't, wouldn't you do that? <laughs> I, I mean, know, so high. <laughs> you know, we, 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 you and I, well, I apparently have perfected. No, the you one. buy high and sell low, but I generally try to go buy low and sell high. <laughs> All right. Well, we're talking about buying and selling. Yeah, M&A get it. Oh, my God, there's so much. All right, you ready? mergers and acquisitions, baby. Let's do it. Signify Health acquires Caravan Health in a deal $250 million combination of cash and stock. This one's very interesting to me. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a decent size acquisition. Signify's valuation, you know, it's down like everyone else, but only debt, it's not down like in the in the gutter. It's about a quarter of where it was at the, at the crazy highs and it was worth about a couple of billion. So it's not a huge acquisition, uh, but they do both the home care stuff and they have their, you know, prospective payments, pay, um, risk value-based payment management side. And Caravan Health does a bunch more of that stuff, right? They run a bunch of ACOs and all stuff. So it's an, a nice extension. Caravan Health's got a bunch of ex-CMS people in their management team, which will probably help uh, given what CMS is about to do with direct contracting and, uh, and medical advantage. So it's probably, it looks like a nice tie and a nice tuck into what they're doing. And, you know, uh, your friend Carl Ambrose to there is not dumb. And uh, guess who the big backer still a single player is? Oh, my favorite capitalist. Matthew Holt, Mountain Capital Matthew Holt, who will love the interview that I did with Kyle Armbruster and Lynn Barr, who's the founder of Caravan Health. So you guys have to check that out if you want the details about it. All right, Kaneska gets $45 million in a Series C. What do they do? Yeah, they do a bunch of biometric measuring stuff for clinical trials. Came out of Merck a long while ago. I actually did a bit early stage consulting with these guys eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. Um, not quite sure why they've been taking so long. This is like a Series C, but uh, hopefully it's going to do well. Cancer navigation company Jasper Health gets $25 million in a Series A, brings their total up to 31 Yeah, this is uh, Adam Pellegrini from uh, CBS, Walgreens, a bunch of other places, and Greg Orr from Walgreens and CBS. I can't remember which one. They were working together. Uh, really, really, I, li- I like this one a lot. All right, Vinca, $30 million for end-of-life planning. 
Yeah, I don't know much about this company, but they've been doing uh, good work in helping people get advanced directives. There's another company called My Directives, which was around earlier pushing this. Several competitors in the space now, but integrating that into EMRs. And Doximity acquires Amion, which is a scheduling app. <laughs> the big news here is about their Q3 earnings. Yeah. yeah so Hold. First of all, this acquisition, 82.5 million. This brings like a scheduling thing for doctors into their whole little portfolio. But talk to us about that and those well, Q3 earnings. So it's pretty clever, right? So Doximity, you know, it's got all the doctors in the world on its system. It's, it makes most of its money selling drug adverts to them. And marketing on behalf of the pharma companies but during the pandemic they picked up a lot of activity both for those individual doctors and for enterprise doing telemedicine and telehealth the scheduling thing i think from uh amy on which is pretty which is 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 fits pretty well into that and apparently it's used by quite a lot of uh, of independent doctors as well so uh that's you know that's where it came from but i mean the real big news is yeah <laughs> The, the earnings are up, you know, nearly 100% on the on the way to you know, nearly 100 million, 97 million, 67% year on year increase. I mean, they're going back gangbusters still. Well, after even though the stock is well down, or the stock is up about 25% today, and uh, their margins, their net margins, are what? They're like made over 50 million dollars. They make, you know, everyone else is losing money. They're like EBIT is like 45% of revenue. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know. Um, Jeff Tagney should be giving le lectures to the rest of the digital CEOs on how to make Apparently so. <laughs> he seems to have really figured it out. You know, he's um, not one of those CEOs who is is in over his skis. He, 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 he is like, you know, people are sitting around saying, why is this company worth more? Don't forget, it was worth a lot. One point it was on the way to be worth like Peloton, uh, Peloton, sorry, Teladoc. Talking about companies who should come down off their highs. Yeah, uh, it was down last week. And I should have bought some. Hmm. Sure. No, I've Again, always thought... Uh, to my Milo, credit, to, so my secret, to my secret credit, when uh, Venrock used to send around that, you know, uh, questionnaire to sort of the digital health crowd, I mean, saying, who would you like to buy and have an I IPO? I always put down Dr. Cindy. Don't forget, they were the ones who raised all that money from Rebecca Lynn at Canvas and never spent it. <laughs> Basically gave her a massive present. <laughs> yes, you can buy a bunch of our equity. We'll never touch the money and then we'll give you the equity, which is worth 20 times as much. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, super well run company. A lot of people, yeah, I still have a lot to say, I never use it, but you know, they clearly advertise it. Uh, clearly, the, the people who do use it in terms of the customers are they're liking it. They're never good. underestimate the value of a micro audience of niche people, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, it's not that micro, right? They've got basically every doctor in the place. I for, understand, for, but like comparatively, I mean, for I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. it's an important and influential group of people to hit I mean, with I the mean, right kind of messaging at the you know right compared time. Compared to the other big social network for consumers, which went down twenty five percent this. Why? Right? No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, somebody would look at that and say, like, oh yeah, just the doctors. Like, why wouldn't you branch this out? Get patients. Get this. Get that. And it's like, okay, well, there's something to be said for very you know capture of a very targeted niche market. No, it's uh, like those who watch health tech deals. Yeah, our niche market may be smaller than Dr. Millet, you know. All we need is one person to sponsor that timer rooster. I'm secretly hoping it's Mountain Capital Matthew Holt who decides to do it. And then, and then, and then uh, you know, and then there's a replacement. You can welcome under. in the Mountain Capital uh, timer rooster. Wouldn't that be nice? It would just be nice if there was some identity mix up and I got his bank account. That's all. It would be nice if that happened, and uh, you know, maybe yeah, he, maybe he can sit in that chair, and I can talk to him a couple times a week about funny people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like the, I, I could be like the guy who stole, who, who stole uh, four four billion dollars in Bitcoin with his wife, who's all over social media, just got arrested. Oh that? my god, I saw that. I'm like, I'm waiting for this whole like stupid mini series that tries to position them as like a modern day Bonnie and Clyde dealing in Bitcoin. Like, oh my God, like, please. Uh, uh, all I know is if I stole $4 billion in Bitcoin, I think, I hope you would help me disappear. All I could actually think better. of was the time your Bitcoin got stolen. They did. Uh, well, I know, and I was like, they, they stole they like, someone stole half a Bitcoin off me. They stole or someone helped them steal or whatever they had the keys to like, thousands of bitcoins i know that but it was like the time frame was similar to when you yeah. lost your bitcoin and i was like i wonder if you were a part of this maybe maybe i am <laughs> oh, well. all right uh, gonna, out of here. yes well to donate bitcoins to matthew holt and i find us over there on twitter he is at bolty boy i am at just Damasa. and go ahead let me see you point at the I side point better because last time i didn't point Thank well you. last time
time you pointed at the side for the podcast audience, it was the most lackadaisical point you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> this time now, at least, oh, look, it's two different kinds of pointing to the banner behind him that says the healthcare blog, where you can find the email newsletter link and subscribe to it so you get the best of the blog and these health tech deals episodes delivered right into your inbox. Very good. Very and good. this week, WDF Health podcast coming soon. Coming soon. <gasps> I mean, no, it's coming. <laughs> two big news stories. I got to talk to um, to, to Steve Gutentag from 30 Madison about his merger with Neurox and then Kyle Armbruster today with the merger with or the acquisition of uh, Cat Caravan. So yeah, exciting stuff. All, going all, on over, all, all over it. All over it, Jess. All right. Yeah. Say goodbye though. Bye everybody. Talk to you soon.